It has been a long day. Exhausted, you lie down and close your eyes. A strange sensation comes over you as you wait for sleep to take you. You begin to feel as if you're drifting in a gentle ocean current. Trusting yourself to this current, you allow yourself to settle into unconsciousness. When you next open your eyes, you find yourself in an unfamiliar place. Ah, you're awake. I thought I would have to content myself with staring at your sleeping face all night long. Not that I would mind. You are making such lovely expressions in your sleep. Just what kind of dream could cause a human face to contour like that? <laughs> oh my, where are my manners? I haven't even introduced myself yet. I am Anastasia, one of the oldest of the so-called demon lords. I'm sure you must have many questions about your present situation. Let me start by saying you're not on your earth anymore. You've been summoned to another world by a very special life form, known as a demon core. While powerful beyond measure, demon cores are incapable of using their own great power. That's why they require a partner to bond with them. But finding compatible partners is difficult. In fact, it's so rare to find a compatible soul that demon cores often must expand their search to other worlds throughout the multiverse. As you may have already guessed, that's where you come in. My demon core recently spawned a new core, as it tends to do every few thousand years. Surely thereafter, that new core summoned you here. The moment you set foot on this world, it bonded with you. You've already become the 137th Demon Lord of our universe. As the Demon Lord of the 13th seat, I would like to formally welcome you to our ranks. Sorry, no backsies. What is done is done. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll come to enjoy your new position. There are many perks to being a Demon Lord. The first of which is your new form. You may change your age and redesign your body one single time to anything within human bounds. Go ahead and try it. Just put your hand on your demon core with the intent of changing your form. Upon touching your demon core, you are suddenly flooded with a tremendous amount of magical power. The magical energies begin to run rampant, warping and changing your body from within. You come to the horrific realization that if you do not get things under control, you will end up becoming an abomination. All that will await you is death, or perhaps something even worse than death. You cannot stop these energies until they have run their course, but through conscious will, you discover that you can manipulate the direction that they can take. In the end, you regain control and succeed in achieving your ideal human form, with only a few mutations. Mutations. You must choose three mutations from this section. Fangs. Two or more of your teeth become longer and much sharper. You can choose which ones grow and which ones remain the same. When you drink the blood of a minion, you gain their unique trait. You can only hold one trait at a time through this method. If you take the trait of another minion, you lose the trait of the previous minion. Horns. You can choose to grow between one and four horns on your head. Horns are considered to be an important status symbol among demons. You can choose two extra minions of any type from the minion section. Tail. You grow a single tail. It can be as long as your body or smaller if you prefer. Its appearance can mirror any kind of tail that exists in the natural world. The tip of your tail is razor sharp and excretes venom that can cause complete paralysis in even the strongest of humans in just 10 seconds. Wings. You can choose to grow between 2 and 8 wings. Their appearance can mirror any kind of wing that exists in the natural world. Magical circuits allow you to fly as fast as you can run or effortlessly hover in place for as long as you wish. 
scales. Draconic scales cover as much of your body as you want. These scales can be red, fire, blue, cold, or yellow, electric. You gain extreme resistance to your chosen element. Demonic features. Your eyes glow red with power. Optionally, you may choose to have pointed ears and an unnatural skin color. These changes signify potent demonic power. You can choose two additional abilities for yourself from the abilities section. Tentacles. You can choose to grow between two and eight tentacles. They can be as thick as your arms and as long as your body, or they can be smaller if you wish. Your tentacles are monstrously strong. If you manage to bind a human, they stand no chance of breaking free without some kind of special escape ability. Third Eye You gain a third eye on your forehead. This eye may be larger or smaller than your other eyes, and it is seen as a sign of psychic talent. You can astral project to observe distant places. While astral projecting, you can possess any of your minions. You can make your minions believe that they have acted accordingly to their own will, or you can make them forget everything that happened while possessed. Aquatic You grow gills on your neck. Optionally, you may choose to have webbed fingers, webbed toes, and fins any way you want. You can breathe underwater and swim as fast as you can run on land. Tattoos Your body is covered in tattoos of power. This signifies a strong connection to your demon core. You can choose two additional demon core upgrades from the demon core upgrades section. Extra parts. You grow two additional limbs, appendages, or organs of your choice per purchase of this ability. You can choose to grow additional tentacles or tails as well, if you have those mutations. Your body will change to accommodate any extra parts. They will be biologically viable and not cause health issues. You can choose this mutation multiple times. Oops. I guess I forgot to tell you about the mutations. How thoughtless of me. It looks like everything turned out alright though, and you show me such wonderful expressions. Now now, don't be mad. We all have to go through it, and I'm sure you'll like this next part. The relationship between a demon lord and their demon core is a simple one. The demon lord protects the demon core, and in return the demon core empowers the demon lord. Now that you have the body of a demon lord, you'll be able to use the energies of your demon core to grant yourself all kinds of powers. But before we get to that, let me first tell you about the powers that you already have. Basic Abilities you already have all of these abilities. Immortality. You are biologically immortal. You won't age. You won't get sick. You'll always remain fit and healthy. You can fully regenerate from any injury that does not kill you. Small wounds heal in a few minutes. Severed limbs and destroyed organs heal in about 30 minutes. If you die, you'll respawn one year later in a safe place near your demon core. Territory. The area within five kilometers of your demon core is your territory. Your demon core has influence over this area. Within your territory, you will not have to eat or drink, but can if you want to. Structures you build in your territory will be well ventilated. You can change the weather and temperature within your territory, but are restricted to conditions that allow for human survival. Demon lords, core guardians, inquisitors, and heroes can sense the existence of your core when they are within 15 kilometers of your territory. Status Immunity You are immune to all kinds of negative status effects including, but not limited to, charm, domination, petrification, confusion, and poison. You can temporarily turn this immunity off if you want to get drunk or something. Summon Demon Core once per year, you have the ability to summon your demon core to your location. Upon being summoned, it quickly takes root in its new location. Your demon core is tethered to its position and cannot be safely moved except through this power. The gods are allowed to disable this ability when blessed humans, enemy demon lords, 
or enemy core guardians are within 25 kilometers of your territory. Creation and removal. Within a few seconds of concentration, you can remove one cubic meter of non-magical, non-living material from existence. With a few seconds of concentration, you can create one cubic meter of stone, dirt, water, or sand. You cannot make precious gems. The gods are allowed to disable the usage of this ability within or around an invulnerable structure when there are enemies in that structure. Matter Manipulation With a few seconds of concentration, you can manipulate any non-magical, non-living material that is within 5 meters of yourself. You can change the shape and color of objects. You can change the transparency of objects to anything between window glass and complete opacity. You can fuse objects together or break them into pieces. The gods are allowed to disable the usage of this ability within or around an invulnerable structure when there are enemies in that structure. Bulwark Your demon core can make unshifting stone walls, flooring, and ceilings of your creation invulnerable as long as they are within your territory. This effect weakens around sharp corners. The highest ranking gods are allowed to remove this effect and make your walls vulnerable in sections of structures that are not connected to both the surface and to your demon core by a valid path. To qualify as a valid path, an average human with water magic must be able to traverse it and it must be at least 5 meters high and 5 meters wide. Are you starting to feel better? Well then, now seems like the perfect moment to remind you that you're only immortal for as long as you can protect your demon core. If your demon core dies, you die. And it's an unfortunate fact that the gods of most worlds view us as unwanted invaders. The gods do so like their private sandboxes, and we tend to shake things up. Due to certain agreements, the gods are forbidden from taking direct action against us, but they can command their human followers to hunt you down. They may also spawn human heroes to deal with our kind, but who cares about trivial stuff like that, right? Look on the bright side of things, you may luck out and live. Right now, you're pretty much a small fry. If you lay low and don't do something stupid like trigger a technological or cultural revolution, the gods may just ignore your presence. However, if you would rather not rely on the whims of gods, I have a very reasonable proposition for you. For a promising demon lord such as yourself, I would be willing to lend you a tiny fraction of the power I've accumulated over the ages. Of course, I would not do this out of the goodness of my heart. You would be expected to pay me back twofold. You don't need to answer now. When we're done here, I'll just collect any unspent power from you. You have received 12 debt points from Anastasia. These debt points can be used in the sections to come. Any unused debt points will be returned to Anastasia without increasing your debt. For every debt point that you do use, you will have to pay back 2 points to Anastasia in the future. It takes about a decade for a demon lord to generate 1 point worth of power. I have an ability called Magic Eye that lets me measure the combat potential of other people. Naturally, I used it on you the moment you acquired your new body. Those were the results. To put things into perspective, an average man in their prime has three in most of their stats. An average city guard may have four in their combat stats. Veteran adventurers and well-trained knights may have five to seven in their combat stats. Top-ranked adventurers and members of the hero party may have eight to 10 in most stats. Heroes typically have 10 to 12 in every stat. As you can see, you're remarkably well-rounded, but woefully outgunned by human heroes. But take heart, you can always use some of that power I generously lent to you, if you want to give yourself a well-needed boost. You can spend one point to increase any of your stats by two. Your own power as a demon lord grants you 10 points to spend on your stats. If you want to go beyond that, you can spend some of the debt points that Anastasia lent to you. Attack power measures the ability to cause physical damage. It factors in strength and natural weaponry. 
if the creature is humanoid, it factors in a suitable weapon for their status. Special power measures the magical power and or the potency of certain kinds of creature abilities. Combat speed measures how quickly a creature can attack and react in combat. A mimic that can quickly grab a nearby adventurer but cannot chase after them will be an example of a creature with high combat speed but very low movement speed. Movement speed measures how quickly a creature can move around. Health measures how much damage a creature can withstand before they die. An exceptionally thin-skinned elephant would be an example of a creature with high health but low toughness. Toughness measures how well a creature can resist damage. A small turtle with a thick shell would be an example of a creature with high toughness but low health. Resistance measures how well a creature can resist magic and resistible status effects. Note, attack power, special power and health are exponential. Every point spent in them represents a twofold increase. So, a creature with four attack power will deal physical damage twice as well as a creature with three attack power. A creature with seven attack power will deal physical damage 16 times as well as a creature with three attack power. Movement speed is exponential as well, but a slower exponent. Every three points spent in movement speed represents a twofold increase. Combat speed, toughness and resistance are linear. A creature with six combat speed will only be able to react twice as fast as a creature with three combat speed. The stat cap for you is 12. Raw stats alone aren't enough to win the day. What you need our powers, my debts um, hunt friend? Fortunately, powering you up is what we're doing next. Your demon core should be able to grant you a few powers, but don't forget you can also tap into the power I lent you to get even stronger. As my star pupil, I'm expecting great things from you. Try not to die too soon, alright? Abilities Your own power as a demon lord gives you six points to spend on this section. You can spend debt points to purchase additional powers if you want more. All powers cost one point to purchase. Unless otherwise stated, all magical abilities can be used repeatedly without limit. Disguise. You can freely change your human features to anything that is humanly possible. You can temporarily reverse the mutation process to appear entirely human. When you suppress your mutations, you lose access to your mutation powers, but retain all other powers. Combat Shifter requires disguise. You have retained a much greater mastery of shapeshifting. You can shift the position of any of your body parts, even moving internal organs around to avoid an otherwise fatal attack. You can momentarily harden and transform parts of your body into natural weapons to do things like turn your arm into a sword or make spears jut out from your body. Summoning. You can keep up to 10 of your minions in your own personal storage. While they are in your storage, they will be kept in stasis. Whenever you want, you can summon your stored minions to your current position. Elemental Magic. You are adept at elemental magic. You can hurl fireballs, throw lightning bolts, drown your enemies, watch the ground swallow your foes, or fly through the air with a powerful gust of wind. Special power increases the magnitude and intensity of elemental magic. Illusion Magic. You become proficient with illusion magic. You can fool the senses of others with realistic illusions, or even make yourself and other nearby people invisible. Special power increases the range of illusion magic. Teleportation. You can blink around freely, instantly moving to any location that you can see. With a few seconds of concentration, you can teleport anywhere on the planet that you can visualize in your mind. Scrying. You can view distant locations for a suitable medium, like a crystal ball. You can also project a view of a location on a mirror or a clean pool of water, allowing other people to see the scene. Magic Eye. See through any illusion, perceive magic, interrupt spells, or dispel magical effects and curses with your eyes. You can also view statistical combat information about yourself or others. This can be used to expose shapeshifters. Contract Magic. 
You can make binding agreements with willing sentient creatures. If those creatures refuse to do what they promised, the contract magic will take effect and destroy them from within. Creatures killed in this way cannot be resurrected or revived by any magic available to humanity. Clone. Once per week you can create a copy of yourself with all of your memories. This copy is a true NPC with no conscious experience of its own, but it is as intelligent as you. It is far weaker than you, having minus five to all of your stats. It has all of your abilities with the exception of this one. It is considered a minion and must obey you. You can choose whether your other minions will recognize it as an ally or not. You can take this ability multiple times. You are limited to one copy per purchase of this ability. Energy Beam You can shoot a concentrated beam of magical energy at your foes. The longer you charge the beam, the more powerful the beam will be. You can charge the beam for a maximum of 10 seconds. With enough special power, this beam could cut most modern buildings in half. Unique Trait You permanently gain the unique trait of one of the minions from the minion section. You can only gain the abilities of minion types that you have purchased from the minion section. All passive traits like Fire Body, Acidic Blood and Invisibility can be toggled on and off. You can choose this ability multiple times. Our demon cores require magical energy to grow and thrive. We demon lords share certain senses with our demon cores. So when they get the energy they need to grow, it feels pleasant to us. The intensity of that sensation depends on the source of energy. If your demon core automatically generates its energy, you may feel a mildly pleasant sensation throughout the day. If your demon core draws in energy from the life force of others, you will feel the same kind of sensation, but it will vary in intensity, depending on how many people you are siphoning energy from. If your demon core draws in energy from the emotions or pain of others, you'll feel a more intense kind of pleasure, depending on the strength of the feeling, but it will not last as long. If your demon core draws in energy from lust or death, you'll feel extreme but fleeting pleasure. You can disable the sensory link with your core if you want, but why would you? It's one of the best parts of being a demon lord. Feeding on the emotions of others is just the best. It's what made me what I am today. Just kidding. I've always been this way. DPU Generation Your demon core stores energy for your use. This energy is measured in demon power units, DPU. Choose one source of energy for your demon core. You can purchase an additional energy source at a cost of three debt points. No demon core can have more than two sources of energy. You gain no energy from your own minions. Your demon core cannot generate more than 500,000 DPU per day from these sources. Any energy that goes beyond that amount will be lost. Note that all stated DPU numbers assume that you are siphoning energy from an average human in their prime, but the most powerful humans can be worth up to 500 times as much. Automatic 100,000 DPU a day Your demon core requires no outside source of energy. This can generate its own magical energy. Life 3 DPU per person per hour your demon core siphons a tiny amount of life energy from humans. All living humans that are within your territory provide your demon core with a small amount of magical energy. Despair 0 to 20 DPU per person per hour. Your demon core draws in energy from negative emotions like depression and fear. The amount of energy this provides depends on the intensity of the emotion. Negative energy is siphoned from all living humans within your territory. Happiness 0 to 20 DPU per person per hour. Your demon core draws in energy from positive emotions like love and hope. The amount of energy this provides depends on the intensity of the emotion. Positive energy is siphoned from all living humans within your territory. Lust 0 to 100 DPU per person per hour. 
Your demon core draws in energy from sexual arousal and physical pleasure. The amount of energy this provides depends on the intensity of the experience. Sexual energy is siphoned from all living humans within your territory. Pain. 0 to 10 DPU per person per hour. Your demon core draws in energy from physical pain. The amount of energy this provides depends on the intensity of the suffering. Energy is siphoned from all living humans that are in physical pain within your territory. Death. 10,000 DPU per corpse. Your demon core feeds on death. If you bring the corpse of a human who died less than 24 hours ago to your demon core, it would absorb the body and provide you with a tremendous amount of energy. What is a demon lord without minions? Not really the lord of anything. Now that you have an energy source, it's time to select your minions. When you've made your selections, you'll be able to summon as many of them as you want. As long as your demon core has enough energy, of course. You seem to have an impressive variety of minions available to you. At least in that regard, you are exceptional. Over time, as your power grows, you'll eventually gain access to all of the minions that are offered here and more. But for now, you should prioritize minions that will help you survive. Who knows? If you summon enough, maybe the heroes will get bored and leave before claiming your head. Your demon core can maintain the bodies of your minions. As long as your minions remain in your territory, they will not need to eat. They will not age or get sick. They will always remain fit and healthy until they are killed or injured. Unless otherwise stated, your minions are infertile. By default, you are as well. The offspring of the few minions that can reproduce have free will and will not gain sustenance from your demon core. This applies to vampires and zombies as well. If you infect a human with vampirism, they may become a vampire, but they will not be your minion. If a minion is killed in your territory, it will respawn in a location of your choice in your territory. If a minion is killed outside of your territory, you will have to spend DPU to bring it back. Abused minions may choose to not respawn. Specialty Before choosing your minions, you will need to specialize in a single type of minion. Choose one. Fantasy creatures are among the most prevalent in the literature of Earth. They could be considered monsters typical of the fantasy genre. Arcane creatures have to do with magic and alchemy. They include artificial constructs, magically enhanced creatures, and magical entities. Abyssal creatures include horrifying monsters, Lovecraftian entities, and general mindfuckery. Undead creatures include ghosts, zombies, skeletons, vampires, and other such things. Creatures of this type are naturally immune to most status effects that influence living biology, such as poison. However, they take damage from things like holy magic and turn undead. Demonic creatures include those who live in hellish worlds, as well as those who are expelled from the realms of the gods. With the exception of the fallen angel, they are all resistant to fire and weak to holy magic. Natural creatures include elementals and entities that live in the wilderness, both malevolent and kind. Mythical creatures include the oldest and most famous entities in the stories of Earth. There is always some kind of legend associated with these creatures. Minions Minions of your chosen specialty cost one point to unlock. All other minions cost two points to unlock. When you unlock a minion type, you can create as many of those minions as you want with DPU. All minions have a single unique trait that is highlighted in pink. Minions with unique traits that can be acquired with the fangs mutation are marked with a drop of blood. Flying minions are marked with a pair of wings. Minions that can survive underwater are marked with a water drop. When your minions die within your territory, they will be queued up to respawn. Queued minions will respawn one at a time in an unpopulated location of your choice within your territory. You can change the location that different kinds of minions respawn in. You can also change the order of the queue 
to favour certain minions. Your own ability as a demon lord gives you 12 points to spend on this section. You can spend debt points to gain additional minions if you want more than that. Minions Tier 1 Summon cost 10,000 DPU Minions of this tier are treated as expendable fodder by many demon lords. They are your weakest minions and are often underestimated. Your demon core can respawn a minion of this tier in 5 minutes. Goblin Fantasy Goblins are known for their aggression and ability to rapidly reproduce. Some demon lords will release goblins into the wilderness so that the goblins will multiply into a huge horde. This weakens nearby human kingdoms by forcing them to exterminate the goblins whenever they grow too numerous. It becomes an endless battle of attrition. Horde. Goblins can reproduce with women from other species. Slime Fantasy. The fluid bodies of slimes allow cutting weapons to slice through them without doing much harm, but they still take physical damage from the impact of the attack. Slimes can manipulate their bodies to fit through small spaces. They are highly acidic and can easily dissolve human flesh. Their primary method of attack is to envelop their foes and bring death through asphyxiation and acidic burns. Their slow speed makes them better at ambushes than direct combat. Slimes are weak to fire magic. Enhanced digestion. Slimes can eat almost anything, allowing them to survive in environments that most living creatures would starve in. They can even eat rocks and metal. Their bodies produce no waste. Familiar Arcane. At first glance this creature may appear to be a normal owl, but it is far from ordinary. Familiar owls are a special breed that have been modified by wizards to be highly intelligent and capable of speech. Wizards often use them as messengers and spies. Silver Tongue. Familiars can master most languages in a matter of hours. Electrofin Arcane. Bored alchemists modified and accidentally released this special kind of piranha, which has been magically enhanced with traits from an electric eel. They are larger than regular piranhas and they are electrified. They retain their veracity a natural tendency to attack as a group. They are heavily resistant to electricity. They can only live in the water. Electrocute. Electrofins can emit a powerful electric shock, similar to that of an electric eel. This is not considered a magical attack. Eldric Parasite, Abyss. These parasites are highly intelligent. They will seek out living creatures and attempt to enter their bodies. They often require their host to be restrained or incapacitated as they are too weak to succeed if their host resists the entry process. If they make it to the brain of their host, they are able to take control. Their control can be subtle and leave the host believing that they are acting in accordance with their own will or it can be made obvious to the host that their free will is being trampled. Sixth Sense Eldritch Parasites have a supernatural sense for danger and for picking the very best moment to attack. Facehugger Abyss Facehuggers are weak but fast. They jump at their prey and attempt to latch onto their face. When in place, huggers will wrap their tail around the necks of their prey and attempt to lay their eggs inside the stomach of their victim. When these eggs hatch, the offspring immediately devour their host from the inside before searching for more prey. Huggers born in this way have free will and gain no sustenance from your demon core. Acidic Blood The blood of a hugger is acidic enough to quickly melt through flesh. Their acidic blood causes no damage to themselves. Skeletal Warrior Undead Skeletal Warriors are cheap and intelligent enough to use siege equipment. They are fearless and have no sense of pain. They require no sustenance. Demon Lords often use large armies of them to attack enemies outside of their territory. Restless. Skeletal Warriors have limited stamina and do not require sleep. Zombie Undead. Zombies have very low intelligence and cannot follow complex orders. They can only clumsily seek out the nearest living enemy and try to devour them. Enemies that are transformed into zombies 
will not be your minions and will attack both friend and foe. Your zombies will never decay as long as they remain within your territory. If they leave your territory, they will decay to uselessness in a few weeks time. Zombie Virus Any living creature that gets bitten by a zombie will transform into a zombie within a single day, unless they are cleansed with purifying magic or a high grade antidote. Imp Demon Imps are the lowliest of demons. They are weak and cowardly when caught alone, but are bold in large groups. They are useless in close combat, but can hurl fast moving bolts of flame at their foes from a distance. Homing Projectiles Magic projectiles fired by imps are able to change direction and home in on their targets. Burning Soul Demon Burning souls are evil spirits that have been consumed by hate. They manifest in the world of humans as a burning skull. They can fly or hover in place. They have low intelligence and will attack any living creature that does not belong to you. Firebody Burning souls are permanently clad in flame. These flames cause no damage to themselves. Forest Spider Nature Forest spiders grow as large as a medium sized dog. They hang out near the tops of trees. When an oblivious creature traverses the ground below, they lower themselves on top of that creature. After ambushing their prey, the spider binds them in webbing until they are ready to devour them. Paralyzing Venom If left untreated, the bite of a forest spider can paralyze even the strongest of humans in about a minute. Internal organs liquefy in about a day. Plant of Anguish Nature This magical plant can change its colour and appearance to blend in with its surroundings. Most living creatures that touch it will experience excruciating pain within a few minutes. This is not magic or an abnormal condition and cannot be remedied in a simple way. The plant of anguish will never harm you or your allies. Stinging Hairs Tiny stinging hairs cover the plant of anguish. When a creature brushes against the plant, its hairs come off and penetrate the skin of that creature. The hairs periodically release a potent neurotoxin that causes extreme pain until the hairs are removed. Death Worm Myth The Death Worm is a subterranean worm that lives in the desert. It is less than a meter in length. It briefly emerges from underground and bites the feet of creatures traversing the desert sand, injecting them with its venom before once again disappearing underground. Afterwards, it patiently stalks its prey, waiting for them to collapse so that it can take its time consuming them. Sleeping Venom If left untreated, the bite of a death worm will send even the strongest of humans into a coma in about 10 minutes. Caladrius Myth The Caladrius is a white bird that can sacrifice itself to heal the injured. It will never harm itself to the point of dying, but it may take itself to a near-death state to heal a severely wounded creature. It has a natural desire to help and will seek out injured allies without being ordered to do so, but you can direct it to heal a specific creature if you want. The Caladrius possesses a slow form of natural regeneration that allows it to recover from any injury within 24 hours. Sacrificial Healing When the Caladrius takes damage, a nearby ally will be healed. It may take several Caladrius to heal a high ranking creature. Minions Tier 2 Summon Cost 200,000 DPU Minions of this tier are on par with average adventurers. They are outclassed by top tier adventurers, but can still be a threat to them in groups. Your demon core can respawn a minion of this tier in an hour. Orc Fantasy Orcs are powerful and skilled warriors that may become proficient with any kind of weapon, but they prefer axes. They reproduce faster than humans, but slower than goblins. Like goblins, they are often released into the wild by demon lords to put pressure on human kingdoms. Their warlike nature ensures conflict with human settlements. Tribe Male and female orcs can reproduce within their own species. Lizardmen Fantasy Lizardmen are an ancient race of cold blooded reptilians. Before the fall of their civilization, they were known as savage and honourable warriors, 
but today they are known for their cruelty. Small clusters of lizardmen exist throughout their world, and most of them deal in slavery. Their unique talents make them great at ambushing their prey. Their weapon of choice is the spear. Camouflage. Lizardmen can change the colour of their skin to blend in with their surroundings. This is not magic and can still fool those who are capable of seeing through magical illusions and invisibility. Mimic Arcane Mimics were first created by human wizards to guard valuable items from thieves. They have been outlawed in most human countries, but that doesn't stop demon lords from using them. Mimics can quickly grab and devour people who come close, but their slow movement speed leaves them vulnerable to ranged attacks. Conceal Mimics can completely hide their magical and demonic energy to fool even those who can perceive magic. Automaton Arcane Automatons are a fusion of magic and science. They were originally gifted with a biological brain, but their emotions proved to be a hindrance. So they were modified by wizards to remove all feeling and empathy. The result is an intelligent entity that will faithfully carry out any order they are given without mercy. Their hard bodies are tough, but they are vulnerable to electricity and water. Control Senses Automaton have complete control over their artificial nervous systems. They can amplify or suppress bodily sensations, allowing them to ignore painful injuries if they want. Arachne, Abyss Arachne are half spider and half women. They have a venomous bite, but it is only about half as potent as that of a forest spider. Their human half is capable of wielding weapons. They tend to do very well with spears. Arachne are most known for their webbing, which is tougher than steel and extremely difficult to escape from. Web. Arachne can shoot webbing up to 10 meters from themselves. Higher special power increases the strength of this webbing. Siren Abyss. Sirens are known for their beautiful voices and for their tendency to use those voices to lure sailors to their doom. They are aquatic and can breathe underwater. They are far stronger than their small frame would suggest. They have razor sharp claws that they can retract or bring out in an instant. They use water magic to pull people who stand too close to the shore into the sea. Siren Song The song of a siren is utterly enchanting. Most people will be drawn to investigate the source of the sound. Those with weak willpower will be compelled to investigate. Wraith Undead Wraiths are malevolent spirits who passed on with unfinished business. They are extremely fragile, but their touch causes living creatures to wither and die. They can kill an average adventurer with about two seconds of contact. More powerful creatures can hold out longer, but will still die quickly if a group of raves attack all at once. Raves can hover and fly. Phase. Raves can enter a special state that lets them pass through solid matter. After doing so, it takes them a few seconds to revert back to their normal state before they can attack. Banshee Undead Banshees are messengers from the realm of the dead. They take the form of a human woman when they enter our plane. Death Cry The cries of a banshee will have the potential to kill weak people in an instant. Most will survive it if they are healthy, but even the very strong can succumb if they are injured or in a weakened state. This ability will never harm your allies. Hellhound Demon Hellhounds are a supernatural breed of dog that are much larger and more vicious than their canine counterparts in most human worlds. They have a powerful flaming breath attack. Tracking. The sense of smell of a hellhound is even better than that of a dog, allowing them to sense and track intruders by smell. Sword Devil Demon. Sword Devils are a race of devils that can transform into weapons. Their fighting ability in humanoid form is rather poor, but in weapon form, they are as useful to your minions as a high quality enchanted weapon. To your foes, they are cursed weapons that must not be touched. Should an enemy make the mistake of using a sword devil in weapon form, it will take the sword devil about an hour to fully possess their body. This process of taking control is subtle and often goes unnoticed. Weapon form. Sword devils are able to transform into any kind of melee weapon that was available in medieval times. If you take this trait, your weapon form will be comparable to the greatest of weapons. 
Skinwalker nature. Skinwalkers are evil witches with shape-shifting powers. They are typically seen near forests and are known to stalk and kill people in the woods. They often attempt to lure people into the woods by using the voices of their friends or family. They can take the form of any human or natural animal that they have seen, but cannot exceed twice their base weight. Actor Skinwalkers are supernaturally skilled at acting. They are able to perfectly feign anger, fear, happiness, and other emotions regardless of what they are actually feeling. Man-eating plant, nature. Man-eating plants are magical plants that use their slow-moving vines to grab and crush unsuspecting prey before devouring them. The plant relies heavily on the element of surprise as it is generally too slow to catch prey that are aware. With its mouth closed and its vines hidden, it has as much less sinister appearance. Its vines are thick, tough, and powerful to the point that it is nearly impossible for a bound human to escape without a special escape ability. The plant is rich in water, making it somewhat resistant to fire. Vine Control The man-eating plant can animate and control nearby vines and use them to grab creatures in its vicinity. Minotaur Myth Minotaurs are part man and part bull. They are a full head taller than an average adult man. They are known for their monstrous strength and tendency to charge at their enemies. Minotaurs can wield weapons. They prefer to use heavy two-handed weapons like axes and warhammers. Charge. When charging in a straight line, Minotaurs can exhibit a burst of speed up to twice their normal running speed. They cannot easily stop and cannot make sharp turns while charging. Harpy Myth. Harpies are part woman and part bird. They can fly and prefer to ambush their prey from above, swooping down on them and attacking with their sharp talons. Bird Eye The eyes of a harpy are far superior to that of a human. Their vision compares to the natural sight of an eagle. Minions Tier 3 Summon Cost 4 million DPU Minions of this tier are resistant to negative status effects and their physical attacks are considered magical. They are a match for high-ranking adventurers. Your demon core can respawn a minion of this tier in 12 hours. Ogre Fantasy Ogres are larger and much stronger than minotaurs. They are slow on their feet and often resort to hurling heavy objects as speedy foes that they cannot catch. It's not unheard of for a single ogre to wipe out a dozen veteran guards. Hulking Hurler Ogres are exceptionally good at judging the trajectory of the objects they throw, regardless of the differences in weight, size, and shape between those objects. Griffin Fantasy Griffins are great predators of the skies. They have four legs, each with long and sharp talons. They could bite the head off a man in an instant with their powerful beak. In the wild, their diet consists exclusively of meat. Aerial Lace Griffins evolve to withstand high g-forces. They can pull off sudden turns in the air and go from full speed to a near stop in under a second without suffering negative effects. Strangler Arcane Stranglers used to be human until they were forcefully modified by cruel wizards. In exchange for a reduced lifespan, they obtained permanent invisibility. They are often used as assassins and spies by powerful wizards. Their natural invisibility only extends to their own body so they do not bring weapons with them. When they assassinate a person, they either do it with their own hands or use a nearby object. That is how they came to be known as Stranglers. Invisibility. Stranglers are permanently invisible. This kind of invisibility requires no magic usage or effort to maintain. Chimera Arcane. Chimera were created through alchemical experimentation and are often used as shock troops against the enemies of their masters. The Chimera has the body of a lion that has been greatly enlarged. Its tail is that of a snake. The head of a goat juts out from its back. The goat wields ice magic. The snake can spit acid that causes blindness. Roar. The Chimera can let out a deafening roar that will momentarily stun living enemies that overhear it. This will only work if the special power of the Chimera exceeds the resistance of its foes. Tentacle Horror Abyss Tentacle Horrors dwell in the black lakes of the Abyss. They grab unsuspecting prey 
and drag them under to their deaths. Tentacles overpower and bind their victims while they choke on water. Mercifully, most do not remain conscious long enough to see their teeth. Tentacle horrors require water to survive. They cannot live for long outside of their watery homes. Deep One Tentacle horrors are resistant to the crushing pressure of the ocean depths and can swiftly adapt to changes in pressure, allowing them to quickly rise from the bottom without issue. Witch Abyss Abyssal witches are women who have sold their souls to the Lovecraftian horrors of the Abyssal Realm in exchange for power and eternal youth. In combat, they wield a kind of dark flame magic that is functionally identical to fire magic. They can fly through the air with magic. Witches can directly perceive magic and see through illusions. Witches can dispel magical effects. Portal With a few minutes of concentration, an abyssal witch can create and maintain a stable portal that can connect to any place they have been before. It only takes a few seconds to close a portal. Vampire Undead Vampires are blood-sucking predators that prey on humanity. Their regeneration is as good as your default regeneration. They have perfect night vision. Humans who drink the blood of a vampire will become infected with vampirism and die in three days unless they are magically cleansed. If a human dies in this way, there is a 1 in 20 chance that they will rise again as a vampire. Vampires born in this way have free will and do not gain sustenance from your demon core. Vampires will turn to ash in a matter of seconds if exposed to direct sunlight. Trance. Vampires can put those who look into their eyes for more than two uninterrupted seconds into a minute long trance. Pain can break the trance. Dullahan, undead. Dullahan are headless horsemen that are seen by humanity as heralds of death. They can manifest a horse and a suit of ghostly armor. Should their horse perish in battle, they will receive a new one within a day. They are heavily resistant to physical damage. Knock. All locks and closed gates open in the presence of a Dullahan. Gargoyle Demon. Gargoyles are grotesque guardians with stone-like skin and bodies that are resistant to all forms of damage. As guards, they are tireless and faithful. They have been known to stand at their posts hundreds of years after their masters have been slain. Watcher. Gargoyles can see in the dark and perceive a wider range of color than humans. They can actually see through illusions and even spot shapeshifted creatures. Succubus Demon Succubi are female demons that seduce and drain humans of their life energy, even draining them to death if they choose. They avoid combat whenever they can, preferring to escape dangerous situations. They can charm and control those who give into temptation. The effectiveness of their charm is entirely dependent on the willpower of their target, not the resistance stat. Succubi can hide their demonic features and disguise themselves as normal human women. Sex Magic Succubi can magically induce arousal or trigger orgasms at will. Their magic allows men to ignore the refractory period. Troll Nature Trolls are unfriendly and territorial by nature. They are large and strong, but not to the extent of an ogre. Their blood is highly sought after, as it is a key ingredient in certain kinds of healing potions. Trolls cannot quickly regenerate from wounds caused by fire, acid, or cold iron weapons. Such wounds will take a troll days to recover from. Ultra Regeneration Trolls regenerate at an incredible speed. Small wounds heal in seconds. Severed limbs and destroyed organs regenerate in about a minute. Elven Druid Nature Druids live far from human civilization. They have developed a connection with nature and can communicate with animals. Druids can wield earth magic to drag their foes underground, or bury them in an avalanche of rock. Nature Magic Druids can enrich soil to make it fertile. They can rapidly grow any kind of non-magical vegetation. Small plants grow in a matter of minutes. A large tree can be grown in about an hour. Sphinx Myth Sphinx are strong, fast, intelligent, proficient in elemental magic, and naturally long-lived. At their full potential, they stand above the other creatures of the rank, but before they can use that potential, a condition must be met. The Sphinx must quickly, cleanly, and understandably present a single riddle to its foe. 
It may only wield its full power against those who answer its riddle wrongly. Do not answer within a minute, attack without answering, or assist somebody else in combat who failed their riddle. Riddle. The Sphinx receives a bonus to their stats against those who have failed their riddle. The harder the riddle, the less of a boost they receive. When a foe fails an easy riddle, they receive the full plus two bonus to their stats. Scorpio, myth. Scorpio are enormous scorpions, notorious for being able to kill even a giant with a single sting. They typically inhabit deserts and are known to attack caravans. Deadly Venom. The sting of a Scorpio can stop the heart of even the strongest of humans in just 10 seconds. You require the tail mutation to put this trait to use. If you have a tail, you can switch between this venom and your default venom. Minions Tier 4 Summon cost, 80 million DPU. All minions of this tier can see through illusions. They are naturally immune to negative status effects and their physical attacks are considered magical. Your demon core can respawn a minion of this tier in a week. Dragon Fantasy Dragons are large winged creatures with four legs. They have long claws, tough scales, and a powerful bite. In the wild, they are apex predators that rule the skies. Dragons can transform into a much smaller human-like draconian form, but their draconian form is much weaker than their true form. The stats of their true form are shown in blue. You can summon red, blue, and yellow dragons. Red dragons are resistant to fire. Blue dragons are resistant to cold. Yellow dragons are resistant to electricity. Dragon's Breath. Dragons have a powerful breath attack, which they can release over a wide area. Red dragons have flaming breath, blue dragons have freezing breath, and yellow dragons have an electric attack. Royal Jelly Fantasy. Royal jellies are the largest slimes that are known to exist. When they move, it is like a small scale flood. They can rapidly dissolve any living creature that they envelop. They are heavily resistant to physical damage, though powerful shockwaves can still cause harm to them. They are weak to large scale magic, especially fire. Slime Core Royal jellies have a core hidden somewhere in their body. As long as that core remains undamaged, they will not die, and will fully regenerate from any damage within an hour. War Golem Arcane Imperial Wizards first created these engines of destruction for use in wars against neighbouring countries. They are powerful and heavily resistant to all forms of damage. Their greatest flaw is their slow speed and their low intelligence that only allows them to understand simple orders. They are at least intelligent enough to not mistakenly attack allies. Arcane Beam Whenever a war golem survives a magical attack, some of that magical energy gets absorbed by the golem. When enough energy is absorbed, the golem is able to release it in the form of a powerful beam. Evil Genie Arcane. Evil genies are powerful wish-granting entities that live in an invulnerable lamp and cannot be killed by anything short of a god. They cannot use their great power for anything other than granting wishes, which they will always interpret in a terrible way. Collared genies like yours have severe limitations placed on them. They are only allowed to bring catastrophe to the wisher and their nearby allies. They could annihilate a hero party but not a whole town. They will simply refuse to grant carefully worded wishes that cannot be twisted in a horrible way. They are not allowed to bring harm to you or your allies. Destroying gods and demon cores is beyond their power. Pocket Plane Genies have a pocket plane that only they can enter. When inside, time passes in the outside world as quickly or as slowly as they want. Dominator Abyss Dominators are a race of psychic slave masters. In their natural environment, they often use their psychic powers to render mortals helpless before inserting an eldritch parasite in their body to turn them into permanent thralls. If a dominator has direct physical contact with the brain of a person, the dominator can permanently rewrite their memory and even change the way their brain works. Mind Control If a dominator focuses on a single living creature within their sight range, the Dominator can control the mind and senses of that creature from a distance, as long as the special power of the Dominator exceeds the resistance of their target. Shadow Fiend Abyss Shadow Fiends hate the living and the light. Their attacks are deadly, but their defenses are weak when exposed to a light source. They can see in perfect darkness, 
but find bright light to be blinding. Shadow Invulnerability. The dimmer the surrounding light is, the less damage a Shadow Fiend will take from attacks. In the complete absence of light, Shadow Fiends cannot be harmed at all. Lich Undead. Liches are masters of necromancy, who have turned themselves into undead creatures in order to defy death. They are known for creating vast armies of undead creatures. They can mend damaged undead creatures to reverse decay, or bring them back to serve again. Liches prefer to wield ice magic on their foes, because it leaves the bodies of their foes mostly intact. Revive. Liches can raise the recently dead, as undead servants, as long as the corpse is mostly intact. Creatures that are revived in this way will need to be maintained by a lich, or they will eventually rot to uselessness. Undead heroes will keep their high stats and abilities, but will not have their divine blessing. Zombie Dragon Undead Unlike lesser zombies, zombie dragons retained their intelligence. They have all of the natural weaponry of a dragon, including a breath attack. They are slow to rot, but will begin to rot if they leave your territory. They are immune to curses and black magic. Breath of Death The breath attack of a zombie dragon causes all living flesh in its area of effect to rapidly decay. Balroth Demon Balroth are physical powerhouses, veterans of countless wars. These walking husks live for battle. They are skilled with all kinds of weapons, but most prefer to wield massive two-handed swords. They are intelligent and well versed in battle tactics. When left to their own devices, they will usually choose to seek out worthy opponents. Perfect moves. Balrog can temporarily send their brains into overdrive, making the passage of time feel much slower to them. Seconds can be made to feel like minutes. Fallen Angel, Demon. Fallen Angels are angels who have abandoned their god, been abandoned by their god, or have been banished from the heavenly realms. In any case, Fallen Angels do not lose their angelic powers. Unlike the rest of the demonic faction, Fallen Angels are not weak to holy magic. In fact, they can even wield holy magic against demons and the undead. Fallen Angels can hide their angelic features to disguise themselves as normal humans. Healing Hands Fallen Angels can heal any wound, cure disease, remove curses, and cleanse any negative status effects with a touch. They can resurrect the recently dead, as long as the corpse is mostly intact. Fairy Queen, Nature. Fairy Queens are notorious pranksters with high magic aptitude. They are larger than normal fairies, standing one meter tall. They can transform into a full-sized human form, but rarely do so. They can do minor feats of telekinesis and illusion magic, which they often employ in their pranks. Hex. Fairy Queens can manipulate probability to a certain extent, to bless their allies or curse their foes. There is no limit to the number of creatures they can bless and curse, but the more blessings and curses they have, active, the weaker the effect will be. Fenrir, Nature. The Fenrir is a huge breed of wolf, the size of a dragon. They are wrongly considered to be gods by many tribes of beastmen. They are highly aggressive in combat, preferring to go on the offensive with their high strength and speed. Debilitating Howl. Any living enemy that hears the howl of a Fenrir will have their attack power, special power, combat speed, and movement speed reduced by one for a minute. This does not stack. Phoenix, Myth. The Phoenix is a flaming bird that is said to be immortal. It is naturally immune to fire-based attacks. It can wield and control fire to attack its foes. It can take a human form that is much weaker than its true form. The stats of its true form are shown in blue. Rebirth. When a phoenix dies, it leaves behind an egg. If the egg is not destroyed, it will hatch the following day, and the phoenix will be reborn with all of its powers and memories. Basilisk Myth. Basilisks are legendary reptiles that are known for their ability to turn living creatures to stone. This works on most creatures, but not everything. For example, gargoyles are already creatures of living stone and would not be affected. War golems are not technically life and would not be affected either. Stone Gaze. Living creatures that look into the eyes of a basilisk will turn to stone in about 10 seconds. If a petrified creature is magically dispelled, they will revert back to flesh and blood in a few seconds.
Are you ready to fight back against the cursed hero soldier? Do you want to spit in the face of the gods? Then show me your war face. There is a tier of creatures beyond even tier 4 minions. They are known as Core Guardians. Core Guardians are powerful enough to hold their own against most heroes. Some of the mythological stories of your world involve them. Unlike your other minions, Core Guardians only have to obey your orders if they believe those orders are directly related to defending your demon core. They can refuse any other kind of order, but if you befriend them or trade them something of value to them, they may be willing to help you out with issues that go beyond their primary directive of protecting your core. Core Guardians have a natural desire to stay near your demon core to protect it, so even under the best of circumstances, it will be difficult to talk them into doing a task that will leave them in a position where they are unable to quickly return to your demon core. Really, Core Guardians are such troublesome things. Your demon core chose its guardians prior to summoning you to this world, so I've had time to browse its selection. The guardians that it chose have unique personalities. It seems your demon core has a twisted sense of humor. Do keep in mind that if you choose to manifest a guardian into our world, you may have to associate with that guardian on a semi-regular basis. I'm familiar with most of the core guardians that are offered to demon lords, so I've provided you with detailed information on them below. Of course, this also includes information on the best methods to manipulate your core guardians into following your will. Core guardians are not a minion type that you unlock. They are one-of-a-kind individuals. Core guardians are bound to your demon core in the same way as you are. They share the same form of regeneration as you, and if they are killed, they will respawn with their memories intact one year later. This is completely independent of the minion respawn queue. Like you, they are immune to all negative status effects. They can see through any kind of illusion. They are legendary existences that can only be harmed by similarly powerful entities, magic weapons, or high ranking magic spells. Humanoid Core Guardians already possess legendary equipment, and the natural weaponry and defenses of monstrous Core Guardians are as good as any magic equipment. Core Guardians You can choose a single Core Guardian from your chosen specialty at no cost. Alternatively, you can choose your first Core Guardian from outside of your chosen specialty at a cost of two debt points. You can purchase additional Core Guardians from any specialty for six debt points. Puff, fantasy. General information. Puff is an ancient dragon. He is several times as large as your other dragon minions. Puff has a very laid back personality. He does not attack invaders on sight unless they first attack him or try to push past him towards the demon core. If the invaders stand down, he will often just hang out with them until they leave. If you chill with Puff and become friends with him, he will be much more likely to do things for you that go beyond defending the demon core. You can further raise your affinity with Puff if you send a few female dragons his way. Powers and Abilities Puff has all of the natural weaponry of dragon kind, but it has been supersized. Like all dragons, he can shapeshift into a humanoid, but his humanoid form is considerably weaker than his creature form. Puff has great control over the chemical makeup of his breath attack. In combat he can breathe an acidic gas that burns the flesh off his foes, or breathe out a mind-altering fog that can cause confusion, panic, or send his foes into a coma. Outside of combat, his breath can be used to replicate the effects of any drug. If requested, he will usually let you bottle and concentrate his breath into potent drugs for yourself or others. He has a tendency to get high on his own supply sometimes. Vissi, Fantasy Vissi is a slime queen and a hard-working maid. She views it as her duty to clean up trash like human invaders when they clutter up her home. She takes no pleasure in this and merely sees it as work to do. Vissi has a subservient personality and a natural desire to serve a worthy master. If you can prove yourself competent, she will faithfully serve you. 
When she has recognized you as her master, she will attempt to carry out your orders to the best of her ability. Understanding sarcasm and the nuances of human conversation is not her strong suit. Be careful what you say around her, as she has a tendency to take the things that people say, literally. Powers and Abilities Vissi has divided herself into five different identical entities, all of which are connected in a single hive mind. If one of her clones gets destroyed, she can generate a new clone in an hour to take its place. The only way to kill Vissi is to destroy all five of her. Vissi is a master of disguise. She can change her appearance, texture, voice, and temperature to perfectly match any human. She can even change her outermost layer of slime to match the texture of clothing, allowing her to rapidly change outfits as often as she wants. She uses her talents as a shapeshifter to get within hugging distance of her enemies, so that she can grab a hold of them. When she envelops a human, she can dissolve their flesh in just a few seconds. Alice Arcane General Information Alice is the product of Obsession. She is a living construct created by a mad genius who wanted to replace his dead daughter. Most alchemical creations are animated through the creation of a core that acts as an artificial soul. That artificial soul is not capable of conscious experience. Alice is different. Within her body is a true philosopher's stone that gives her life. Alice has little knowledge of the outside world and very little common sense, but she has a strong desire to learn. She is affectionate and has a gentle personality. She will refuse to kill under any circumstance unless she believes there is no other choice. Show her kindness, and she will come to like you and be inclined to follow you. Powers and Abilities Alice can create a 5 meter wide anti-magic sphere around herself. It is impossible to use any magical abilities while inside the sphere. The sphere cannot pass through an invulnerable wall. It will not affect enemies on the other side of an invulnerable wall. All magical effects, both positive and negative, are dispelled upon entering the sphere. Any hostile magical energies that target Alice will dissipate into nothingness before they reach her. Alice does not need to breathe and can survive in extremely hostile environments, such as the ocean floor. Sicily, Arcane. Sicily is a magic girl. She was kicked out of her team for friendly fire, even though it was not deliberate on her part. She continued on by herself for a while, but after a series of accidents resulted in the destruction of a few buildings, she was branded as an enemy of humanity. Her old friends demanded that she give up her powers. Cecily refused, and the ensuing clash between them forced her to escape and go into hiding. In spite of all this, Cecily still believes in friendship and justice and loathes evil. If she witnesses a truly evil act taking place, she will attempt to stop it, even if that means crossing you or your minions. Cecily will do her duty as a core guardian, but if you want her to be a true ally, you will have to either show her that you are a good person, or corrupt her and cause her to abandon her ideals. Powers and Abilities Cecily can summon an indestructible magic wand whenever she wants. Through it, she can shoot beams of magical energy that can travel for kilometers through the air before dissipating. Her beams are powerful enough to cut through most modern buildings in half. She can fire a spread of magic bullets that are extremely hard to completely evade. If she charges her energy for a few seconds, she can cause an explosion of magic bullets in all directions. Her wand can transform into a stupidly large pink hammer that she is somehow able to swing around in spite of her small frame. Just swinging her massive hammer around causes shockwaves. Dargoth, Abyss General information. Dargoth is the offspring of a witch who mated with one of the horrors that ruled the Abyssal Realm. For the first 16 years of his life he was unaware of his parentage, but on his 16th birthday, he awakened. That was the beginning of a legend. He used his shape-shifting abilities to create those scars that you see on his face. His multicolored eyes are natural, and he won't shut up about them. His self-appointed title is the Devourer of Suns, because he completed a ritual that partially blocked out the sun for a few minutes over a local area. Do not mock Dargoth, or you will hurt his feelings, and he will not listen to you until you apologize. If you want him to do a task, 
All you have to do is make their task seem epic and important. Powers and Abilities Darkov can teleport between shadows that are within his sight range. He wields dark flame magic, which is no more destructive than normal flame magic. His eyes grant him the power to see through walls and solid objects. Dargoth can create a sword and armor made of black flame. Creatures that are struck by his black sword will begin to burn from the inside until they are dispelled. His right arm, which must always be kept sealed, stores large quantities of abyssal power. He can release all of that stored power on his foes, resulting in a huge wave of black flame. Afterwards, he will need at least a week before he can use this attack again. Cathithra, Abyss Cathithra is a mid-rank Lovecraftian entity in the Abyss. She can change her form at will, and has a couple of humanoid forms she likes to take in the human world. Her true form is that of a great spider. She views most humans as insects. She will swiftly kill the ones who bore her, but if she finds a human interesting, she will take her time with them. Cathithra will tend to ignore your minions as she goes about her duties as a core guardian, unless your minions attempt to interrupt her playtime. If you want her to do more than what she is naturally inclined to do, you'll have to be found interesting by her. Take care not to become too interesting, as she has extreme Yandere tendencies. Powers and Abilities Cathithra has an abyssal pocket plane, where she keeps interesting people. She will never keep you there for too long, as that would clash with her prime directive to defend your demon core. She can shoot webbing up to 40 meters from herself. Her webbing is nearly indestructible, even by heroes. None who are caught in her web will be able to escape without some kind of a special escape ability, like teleportation. Her venomous bite causes the magical energy inside her victims to run rampant and tear their own body apart from within. This causes profuse internal hemorrhaging and death in just 8 seconds. Her venom cannot be magically cleansed by her victim, as they will not be able to control their magical energy in that state. Emilia, Undead General Information Emilia is a member of Vampire Nobility, and is used to living luxuriously. She grew up in a mansion with servants waiting on her. She is a sadist with strong predatory instincts. She enjoys the hunt, and enjoys toying with her prey, often spending an excessive amount of time causing physical trauma to her already defeated foes. If you want to get on her good side, the first step is to treat her like Nobility, and provide her with the luxuries and servants that she has become accustomed to. If her mood is good, she will accept most of your requests, as long as you bribe her with a taste of your blood. She finds the blood of heroes, demon lords, and similarly powerful entities to be especially delicious. Powers and Abilities Emilia has all of the abilities of your vampire minion. Her regeneration is as good as that of a troll. She can also transform into a gaseous cloud or a swarm of bats. She can manifest a living whip that bends and moves to strike her enemies and always targets vital areas. Unlike your vampire minion, she is strong enough to stand in the sun without turning to ash, though direct sunlight still makes her uncomfortable. Emilia can weaken any enemy that enters her field of vision. The longer they stay within her field of vision, the weaker they will become. Two minutes of this is enough to turn a human hero into an average human. If her target leaves her field of vision, they will rapidly regain their strength. This ability does not work through transparent walls. Grim, Undead General Information While Grim was working as a Reaper, no human was able to see him. The long hours and lack of interaction made Grim hate his job. When your demon core summoned Grim and granted him a physical form, you freed him from the most boring job in existence. As such, he is already eternally thankful to you and your demon core. Before he became a reaper, Grim used to work as a bartender. He knows all kinds of party tricks and can mix any kind of drink. Befriend him, provide him with a lively atmosphere and laugh at his occasional bone jokes, and he will happily follow your commands. Powers and Abilities Grim can direct his soul to take the form of a scythe, which he wields in combat. Anybody who suffers so much as a scratch from his scythe is doomed to die within a minute. If Grim manages to touch one of your enemies with his hands, they will instantly die. When Grim kills one of your enemies, they cannot be resurrected by any magic that humanity has access to. Grim exudes an aura of death. Enemies that get within 100 meters of Grim cannot use healing magic. 
This aura cannot pass through an invulnerable wall. It will not affect enemies on the other side of an invulnerable wall. Elrenef, Demon. Elrenef is an archdevil. He is a sadist, but of a different variety than Amelia. He enjoys causing mental torment, doing things like offering defeated adventurers a chance of freedom if they kill their allies. He is always on the lookout for souls and often attempts to trick people into accepting foolish contracts with him, which always result in horrible outcomes. Affection is a foreign concept to Elrenef. You cannot win him over by befriending him. He will generally accept reasonable tasks of yours if he believes those tasks are in the interest of protecting the demon core. He will refuse orders that are clearly outside of this category, unless you trade something of value to him in exchange for the service. Powers and Abilities Elrenef has the power to make binding contracts with willing sentient creatures, which he uses to acquire souls. He can freely travel to demonic worlds whenever he wants to barter those souls. He can provide you with 100,000 DPU for every soul he acquires. This extra DPU can be stored beyond your normal daily limit. With a few seconds of concentration, Elrenef can appear in any place that he has been to before. Elrenef can use fire magic and is naturally immune to fire. His weapon is a dagger that can pierce through any kind of armor. Seraphina, Demon. General information. Seraphina used to be a high-ranking angel until her god was slain in the great war between the gods and demon lords. In the end, she could not find a patron and was expelled from the heavenly realms and from the worlds that the gods controlled. From there, she traversed demonic and neutral worlds. Through service to your demon core, she can once again experience worlds under control of the gods, which she greatly appreciates. She has a soft spot for humanity, but will still strike them down without hesitation to protect your demon core. Seraphine is slow to trust and despises betrayal. Always be sincere when dealing with her, and she will come to respect you. Powers and Abilities Seraphina wields high-grade holy magic that is catastrophic to most undead and demons. She can manifest a legendary spear. In combat, she can change its size, extending it up to 10 meters in length in a fraction of a second, before reverting it back to its normal length in the next instant. With a few seconds of concentration, Seraphina can fully heal any living creature within her sight range, cleansing them of poison, disease, curses, and any other problems. Seraphina can resurrect the recently dead, as long as their corpses are mostly intact. Once per year, she can bring a dead creature back to life, regardless of the state of their corpse, if they are willing to return. Shiro, Nature. General Information. Shiro is one of several ancient guardians of nature that were created to maintain the balance of the world that she was born into. In spite of her age, she is still prone to occasional bouts of childish behavior, often pulling pranks on the people around her. The world she was born into lacked complex human civilizations. Technology and human culture are new and exciting to her. If you want for Shiro to do a task, all you have to do is make the task seem exciting and fun. If you trick her into doing something tedious and boring, she'll get mad and probably won't help you for a little while afterwards. Expect revenge pranks. Powers and Abilities Shira can control the elements around her. Her control over the elements is vastly superior to human mages whose magical output is strictly defined by their spells. Controlling earth, fire, wind and water is as natural to her as moving her own body. Shiro can manifest a ritual staff that allows her to perform grand feats of elemental magic. With a few hours of channeling, she can cause small volcanic eruptions, flash floods, large tornadoes or earthquakes. These rituals can be sent from dozens of kilometers away, and your enemies may try to stop her. Shiro can dispel illusions and magical effects. Zephis, Nature. General Information. Zephis is a primordial lord of air. Its body is a whirling mass of wind and electricity, like a tornado that never ends. Zephyrs cannot help but cause destruction wherever they go, and will cause harm to your minions and demon core if they approach. Zephyrs understands this, and will avoid your forces. Zephyrs can read minds from a distance, and communicate telepathically. This is their preferred method of communication. Zephyrs is not capable of much other than destruction, but if you want Zephyrs to do something, you need only ask. 
they will be happy to follow your will. Powers and Abilities The body of Zephyrs is its primary weapon. Those caught inside Zephyrs will be continuously blasted with lightning and debris. Zephyrs is immune to most forms of damage. Shockwaves and other things that disrupt the flow of air around Zephyrs can weaken Zephyrs. If Zephyrs is weakened enough, they will die. If an air mage were to create a tornado that spun in the opposite direction of Zephyrs and made that tornado overlap with Zephyrs, the two would cancel out and it would cause severe damage to Zephyrs. Zephyrs can recover from any damage on their own in about an hour. Zephyrs can recover in half the time if a friendly wind user strengthens and reinforces them. Kraken Myth General Information The Kraken is a simple creature. She enjoys destruction, eating, and playing in the ocean. If you make her the boss of a group of aquatic creatures, it will make her feel important, and she will take her duties more seriously. Surprisingly, she is the type to care for her subordinates and become attached to them. While she is in range of your demon core, she will not need to eat to survive, but she will anyway. Food is one of her greatest passions. If you neglect to feed her regularly, she will set off to find her own food, which will almost always result in disaster. Her hunger is far easier to satiate if she remains in human form most of the time. When bored, she may sink ships. Powers and Abilities The Kraken can shift between a useless human form and a powerful creature form that is even larger than Puff. The stats of her creature form are shown in blue. She moves at half speed on land. She can spew a sticky black sludge that clings to her foes and greatly slows them down. If it gets in their eyes, it causes blindness. Her tentacles are absurdly strong and are her primary method of physical attack. Should a human be bound by them, they will not be able to escape through raw strength, even if they are a hero, unless they have an escape ability like teleportation. Yoko is the incarnation of a powerful fox spirit. She once served as a guardian spirit of a small village until the people of the village began to deify her. This attracted the ire of the predominant faith, resulting in her being executed. In the end, the villagers that she had protected turned on her. Yoko has come to loathe humanity and still seeks revenge on the descendants of her old village to this day. Yoko will readily agree to do tasks that involve harming humans, but if you want her to do things that are contrary to her nature, you will have to gradually change her vengeful nature by showing her the good in people. This may take a considerable amount of time. Powers and Abilities Yoko wields Foxfire, which is a form of fire magic. Her primary weapons in close combat are her tails, which are as long as spears and comparable to a legendary enchanted weapon. Yoko is unrivaled in the art of weaving illusions. She can create tangible illusions that fool all of the senses. She can even create illusionary versions of your unlocked minions that can influence reality. If your enemies fail to dispel or disbelieve the illusion, any harm that the illusionary creatures cause will be made real to them. All oh, demon lords are gifted with basic abilities and boons by their demon cores. But our demon cores are capable of so much more than that. If you live long enough, you'll be able to exhibit godly feats of power. But even a fledgling demon lord like yourself should be able to do amazing things from the perspective of humanity. With your current strength, you should be able to enhance some of your existing powers, and even bring out a few new untapped powers. Of course, you can use some of the power that I lent you, if you want a boost. Demon Core Upgrades Your own power as a Demon Lord gives you four points to spend on this section. You can spend debt points to purchase additional upgrades if you want more. All upgrades cost one point to purchase. Disruption by default, enemies that attempt to phase through solid matter within your territory will be detected by your demon core and their ability will simply fail. With this upgrade, your demon core will instead allow them to use their ability. Your demon core will wait until they attempt to pass through a large object or wall. At the worst possible time, it will disrupt their ability and they will get stuck in the object. Enhanced Creation and Manipulation you can remove large amounts of non-magical, non-living material from existence in an instant at a cost of 10 DPU per cubic meter of material removed. You can create large amounts of stone, dirt, water and sand in an instant 
at a cost of 10 DPU a cubic meter. The range of your matter manipulation abilities are increased to 20 meters. The gods are allowed to disable the usage of this ability within or around an invulnerable structure when there are enemies in that structure. Practice Arena Your demon core now maintains a small pocket plane. Within that plane is a large battle arena. You can open and maintain a portal to this battle arena. You can freely change the terrain in the arena. Any injuries sustained from battle in this arena will be healed upon leaving. Any creature that dies in the arena will respawn outside of the portal in about 5 minutes. You can purchase this multiple times if you want multiple pocket planes. Your demon core cannot enter this space. Custom Minions By default when you create a minion you will get a random minion of that type in their prime. This upgrade allows you to cut out the random factor, letting you customise their appearance and form in great detail to anything within the range of possibility for that creature type. You can customise their personality as well, if you want. Territory Enhancement The size of your territory expands to include everything within 10 kilometres of your demon core. This also enhances your control over the environment of your territory, allowing you to maintain different conditions in different areas. You can create winter conditions in a dungeon room, only to have a hot desert in the next room. You can purchase this ability a second time to expand your territory up to 25 kilometers. Teleport Well By default, anybody who attempts to use any kind of teleportation, portal or instant movement ability to enter or move about through your territory without your permission will have their ability simply fail. With this upgrade, your demon core can instead redirect them to a place of your choosing within your territory. Veil of Privacy By default, anybody who attempts to use any kind of scrying or remote viewing abilities to view your territory will have their ability simply fail. With this upgrade, your demon core can instead show them a false scene or image of your choosing. If you want, it can also cause them to bleed from the eyes and have an aneurysm. Your choice. Lesser Demon Core your demon core can create and maintain a single lesser demon core. Lesser demon cores are not sentient and cannot bond with a demon lord of their own. It can, however, generate its own DPU, which it uses to spawn minions for you. The lesser demon core will create a single tier 1 minion of your choice every day. It will create a single tier 2 minion of your choice once a month. It will create a single tier 3 minion of your choice once a year. It can only create minions that you have unlocked from the minion section. Incarnation Circle Your demon core can create and maintain a single incarnation circle. You can use this circle to cast a ritual that will transform a living creature into any minion type that you have unlocked from the minion section. Doing this costs the same amount of DPU as summoning that minion normally would. Upon being transformed they will truly become one of your minions and will be forced to obey your orders unless you grant them freedom. You cannot transform demon lords and core guardians. Illumination By default your demon core allows you to set the level of lighting within a room or tunnel of your creation as long as that room or tunnel is inside your territory. The level of lighting can be anywhere from well lit to total darkness. However if you choose this upgrade your demon core will have much finer control. It will be able to do things like light up the floor of a hallway but not the ceiling. You can also set intelligent triggers to do things like turn all lighting off when enemies enter the middle of a room. Every dungeon needs traps. Not only are they great for defense, but they also provide endless hours of entertainment. As a demon lord, you have the ability to spend DPU to create traps. Of course, you could save the DPU and have your servants build traps for free. But creating traps through your demon core has a few advantages. The biggest advantage is maintenance. Your demon core will maintain all traps that you create within your territory. Once per day when nobody is looking, your demon core will generate fresh arrows for arrow traps, stoke the flames of lava pits, and even move giant rolling balls back into position. It will repair and reset traps as well, should they be disarmed or destroyed. Traps that you create with DPU will never trigger if your own forces are in the danger zone. Unless you want them to, for some reason. Your own power as a demon lord gives you 4 points to spend on this section. You can spend debt points to unlock additional traps if you want more. 
It costs one point to unlock a trap. Unless otherwise stated, when you have unlocked a trap type, you can create as many of those traps as you can afford with DPU. You can't cram a bunch of these traps on top of each other. There must be at least six meters between each trap or they will fail to activate. Arrow Trap 50,000 DPU The most basic and common form of trap. It shoots an arrow at any enemy that crosses its path. You can put these things almost anywhere, but most have them shoot through tiny holes in the wall. If you spend twice the DPU, you can make it a poison arrow trap. It can use poison from any minions that you have unlocked. Fire Trap 50,000 DPU These traps spew flames at any enemy that enters their range. Like the arrow trap, they can be put almost anywhere. The flames do not travel far, so they're best used in closed areas without much room for movement. Pendulum Trap 250,000 DPU A series of five swinging pendulum blades. Their pattern randomly shifts to throw people off. Best used in hallways. Tentacle Trap 250,000 DPU This trap requires an ominous magic circle. Tentacles will erupt from the magic circle and bind any enemies that get close to it. This trap will not kill your enemies, it will just detain them for you. Pitfall Trap 500,000 DPU This trap requires a floor that is at least 3x3 meters in size and a large hole. When enough weight is placed on that 3x3 meter section of floor, it will give way. Underneath it is a hole with spears at the bottom. If you spend twice the DPU, you can replace the spears with a lava pit. You decide how much weight is required to trigger the trap. The floor over the pitfall can be very tough, but it will not be invulnerable like your walls. Summon Trap 500,000 DPU This trap requires a room, a door, and 10 minions, no genies. When an enemy enters the room and approaches the area of the trap, the doors to the room will lock shut and all 10 minions will be summoned. The doors and the room will be made invulnerable unless a gas trap is also active. The doors automatically open when all enemies or all minions inside the room are dead. The room must be at least five times the size of all 10 minions combined. Falling Ceiling Trap 2,500,000 DPU This trap requires a ceiling in a hallway or a room that is at least 5x5 five five meters in size. When your enemies walk underneath the area of the trap, a 5x5 five five meter section of the ceiling will fall down on them. When there are no longer any living enemies underneath the trap, the ceiling will return to its original position. Gas Trap 2,500,000 DPU This trap requires a room with at least one door. When an enemy enters the room and approaches the area of the trap, the door to the room will lock shut and it will begin to release poisonous gas. The gas can cause death or unconsciousness, your choice. The doors automatically open when all enemies in the room are dead or unconscious. While the gas is being released, the room will be invulnerable, but the doors will not be. Rolling Ball Trap 10 million DPU This trap works best in a long hallway with a steep incline. When your enemies enter the area of the trap, the trap will release a large steel ball from the ceiling. The ball is just short of 5 meters high and 5 meters wide. It will roll down the hallway, crushing any living creature in its path. If you spend twice the DPU, the ball will be made of endamantine and kept at 1000 degrees Celsius. Teleporter 10 million DPU Teleporters require a magic circle. When a living creature steps on that circle, it will teleport them to a set location within your territory. You can change this destination whenever you want. Orb of Imprisonment 50 million DPU An orb that houses a pocket plane. The entire plane consists of a small habitable forest complete with creatures. When one of your enemies touches it, they will be sucked inside. There is a small hidden path from which they can escape the orb. You can station minions inside the orb. You can enter and leave the orb as you please. If the orb is destroyed, all enemies inside will die. False Demon Core 50 million DPU You can only have one of these at a time. The false demon core was made to look exactly like your demon core. When your demon core is about to be attacked, the false demon core will swap positions with your true demon core and explode. The false demon core can only swap with your demon core if it is within your territory. If destroyed, 
it will not be repaired like the rest of your traps. You will have to wait a year to purchase a new one, if it explodes. If you want to be a proper demon lord, you have to do as little work as possible. At least that's my philosophy. As a great demon lord, I don't dirty my hands with mundane tasks, like making my own food, styling my own hair, or putting on my own clothes. I have servants to take care of all that stuff for me. If you don't want to waste your time with tedious work, you'll probably want a few servants as well. They make life so much easier, and the Celestials are so very bullyable. <laughs> servants. Each servant type costs one point to unlock. When you unlock a servant type, you can create as many servants of that type as you want at a cost of 500,000 DPU per servant. If killed in your territory, they respawn in a week. Your own ability as a demon lord gives you three points to spend on this section. You can spend debt points if you want to unlock more. Dwarven Craftsmen. Dwarven Craftsmen come with advanced knowledge of smithing and crafting. As long as you provide them with the necessary components, they can craft equipment, traps, siege weapons, prison cells, or anything else that would fit within the technology level of a medieval world. Dwarves can dissemble nearly anything and understand how it functions. They are great at mining, digging tunnels, construction, and drinking alcohol. Auron Apothecary Auron Apothecaries are masters at making potions. They can create antidotes, healing potions, potions that protect your minions from specific status effects and other such things. They can even make potions of eternal youth. With a touch, they can determine the properties and qualities of plants and other medical ingredients. They can even grow and synthesize potion ingredients within their own bodies. Celestial Maid Celestial maids were raised in isolation and taught to be the perfect maid. They are experts at cooking, cleaning and chores. They are pure hearted and innocent. Some of them still believe that babies come from storks or that women get pregnant from kissing. They have a supernatural sense for what you want them to do. If you have a craving for a certain kind of food, you'll find them serving it to you before you know it. Danuki Merchant Danuki Merchants are skilled at making money, trading and market manipulation. With enough of them you could crash economies, enrich yourself or just gorge yourself in the products of the world. They know minor illusion magic and will sometimes use that to their advantage. Demon Scholar Demon Scholars are highly intelligent and charismatic. They know all about the culture, history and power structures of whatever world you are on. They are multilingual and know most languages. They are schooled in military tactics. They make great diplomats, generals and spy masters. Spirit Enchanter Spirit enchanters specialise in enchanting items. They can enchant all kinds of things from magically powered doors to wands that shoot fireballs. Such items require upkeep and will need to be recharged by the enchanter. They can create permanent enchanted weapons and armour as well. Higher quality items will take more time to complete. Legendary equipment is nearly indestructible but takes years of work to make. I've already given you so much power and you still want more? I must say your ambition is admirable. Indeed, you may be worthy of the title of Demon Lord. There are things that we can do to quickly increase your power. Your Demon Core is using a substantial amount of power to enhance your body, control your minions, and acquire magical energy. I have the knowledge and the ability to operate on Demon Cores. If I reduce the maintenance functions of your demon core, you will have more power to use for yourself. Of course, there will be drawbacks to altering such important functions, and I will be taking a small fee for the service. In the future, if you wish to undo those changes, I would be happy to reverse them again for a small fee. I prepared a few other deals as well, in case the idea of surgically changing your demon core does not strike your fancy. Great power awaits, if you're prepared to face the consequences. Drawbacks All drawbacks are optional. You can choose as many drawbacks as you want. Points gained through drawbacks can be used in any section. 
Weakness. Plus two points. Your Demon Core has dedicated a portion of its power to eliminating your natural weaknesses. Anastasia can sever this link, which would cause you to become weak to holy magic. You would gain three points worth of power from this, but Anastasia will claim one of those points for the service, leaving you with only two points. Inefficiency, plus three points. Your Demon Core dedicates a large portion of its power to acquiring magical energy. Anastasia can significantly disturb this function, which will result in DPU generation at one quarter of the normal rate. This will not affect the maximum amount of DPU you can store in a day. You would gain five points worth of power from this, but Anastasia will claim two of them for the service, leaving you with only three points. Insubordination, plus three points. Your demon core dedicates a large portion of its power to controlling your minions. Anastasia can weaken this function, resulting in a 5% chance that any minions you create will be born with free will and the ability to survive without your demon core. Core guardians are exempt from this. You would gain 5 points worth of power from this, but Anastasia will claim 2 of those points for the service, leaving you with only 3 points. Open challenge. Plus 3 points. Your demon core dedicates a large portion of its power to hiding itself. Demon Lords, Core Guardians, and Allies of the Gods will be able to sense the energies coming from your territory, but not the exact location of your Demon Core. Anastasia can remove this function, allowing them to sense its exact location. You will gain 5 points worth of power from this, but Anastasia will claim 2 points for the service, leaving you with only 3 points. Debt Slave Plus 1 to plus 5 debt points. Anastasia is willing to lend you up to 5 additional points of her own power, but you will be expected to pay her back threefold. Subordinate, plus 8 points. Anastasia is willing to give you 8 additional points of her own power if you become her subordinate. Her enemies will become your enemies. She will create a permanent portal that links your domain to hers. You would be expected to visit on a regular basis for meetings. As her favourite pet, she promises she won't torment you too much, but her unsettling giggling gives room for doubt. It's about time for you to learn what you're up against. Demon laws grow stronger with age. In a few thousand years, you will eventually merge with your demon core and achieve power that rivals the gods, if you manage to survive that long. Gods gain and maintain strength through worship. They are immensely powerful entities. Lesser gods watch over a single planet. Higher ranking gods watch over numerous planets simultaneously, but do not directly aid lesser planetary gods. There are a few reasonable gods that will not immediately seek your destruction. Some may even deal with you. However, most gods would kill you in your infancy if they could. In the past, there was a great war between the demon lords and the gods. This clash caused so much death and destruction that a truce was eventually called. The truce is the only reason why the gods cannot simply smite you. However, even if they cannot kill you outright, they can still take action against you in other ways. The gods can call on human nations that are aligned with their faith to destroy you. Guided by the gods, it is almost certain that powerful human nations will clash with you. Healing potions, antidotes, water breathing stones, tents, food, drink, torches, magic bags and other supplies are commonly carried by adventurers. Light magic, elemental magic, minor healing magic, magic that allows people to breathe in any environment, and food conjuring magic are commonly seen in the human world. Most human mages typically specialize in a single element. Water mages can cast a spell that lets people survive deep under the sea. Earth mages can burrow through the ground. There are exceptional humans that can teleport, levitate, build multiple elements, dispel magic, purge illusions, and even shapeshift. Those with the aptitude to become a hero are occasionally born in the human world. Like the gods, heroes grow in power when the hopes and prayers of humanity rest upon them. Accomplishing great feats to inspire the hearts of people will eventually allow a hero to achieve immortality and a divine rank. With enough time, a hero may even join the ranks of the gods. Heroes rarely travel alone. Most are accompanied by an elite team to cover their weaknesses. Ascended Demon Lords who have merged with the Demon Cores will not be present on any world that you are able to start out in, but you may encounter other young Demon Lords 
who are in the same situation as you. You can trade ownership of summoned minions with friendly demon lords to acquire minions that you would not ordinarily be able to summon yourself. Heroes are just one kind of blessed human. There are many others, including exorcists, priests, paladins, infiltrators, and inquisitors. Gods are allowed to give out a lesser blessing to a single human once every month to grant them one of those roles. Inquisitors are able to sense your territory when they get within 15 kilometers of it. Inquisitors can see through illusions and detect disguised minions of yours that are within their sight range. Priests are able to heal any wound, remove curses, cure disease, and cleanse negative status effects. They can even resurrect the recently dead, as long as the corpse is mostly intact. Exorcists wield holy magic that deals extra damage to demons and the undead. Infiltrators can turn invisible and phase through walls. Paladins have a little bit of every blessing, but to a much lesser extent. They would have to touch a disguised minion to uncover their identity. They would have to be inside your territory to sense the existence of your territory. They can heal and cleanse negative status conditions, but cannot resurrect fallen allies. Now, it's time for you to go. What? You didn't think you could stay here forever, did you? Right now you are in the heart of my domain, but you're not allowed to remain here for long. We demon lords have an agreement with the gods, so I can't pamper you too much. You'll need to stand on your own against your foes. There are a couple of nearby worlds I can send you to. I took a quick look at them and I must say things are slightly less hopeless for you than I first expected. If you survive long enough, you'll be able to escape and move on to greener pastures. Good luck with that. Starting world. You must choose a single world to start out in. You and your demon core will be teleported to a location of your choice on the surface of that world. The rules that the gods have to adhere to when dealing with demon lords like yourself who have not ascended are decided on a case-by-case -case basis by high-ranking gods and demon lords. Every world has a unique set of rules and challenges. In the future, when you are able to freely travel between worlds, you will be able to perceive the details and rules of nearby worlds. However, there are a few consistent rules that apply to all worlds. Gods can never simply smite you. Heroes are not allowed to attack you in your first year of life unless you take hostile action against humanity. The highest ranking gods watch over all worlds and act as enforcers of the rules. They will be aware of your location on every world, but are forbidden from assisting or giving information to the lesser gods you will be dealing with. Adia, the Four Pillars. Only 20% of the surface of Adia is land. The rest of the planet is covered in water. There are four main continents and about a dozen smaller land masses of note on Adia. Each of the four gods that rule over Adia claim ownership of a single continent. The temperature range on Adia is higher than Earth. The polar regions are cool. The equatorial regions are hot to the point of being intolerable to most people. Humans can be found on every mass of land. Airships, primitive firearms and magically powered automatons exist in the most technologically advanced countries. Electricity has not yet been utilised, as magic is just too convenient. Adia Challenge Details The gods of this world are on good terms with each other and unified against threats to the peace of their world. You will be detected by the gods immediately upon entering Adia and your location will be made known to their followers after one year has passed. Currently there are no active heroes on Adia, as none are necessary, but upon your arrival a baby will be born on one of the main continents. That baby has the potential to become a hero. There is a custom on every continent to check the aptitude of children on their 12th birthday. Those with the aptitude to become heroes will be taken and trained by the church in a secret location. There is a grand temple on each of the four continents. These temples are protected by the gods and cannot be destroyed. Upon reaching adulthood, the hero will receive the blessing of their god from the temple. Immediately afterwards, the hero will go on a journey to the other three temples to receive the blessings of the other three gods. 
Humans have no teleportation magic in this world, so the journey will not be an easy one for the hero. They will have to face harsh conditions and cross the great seas in order to reach their goal. If the hero succeeds in gaining all four blessings, they will become nearly unstoppable. Upon receiving all of the blessings, the hero will seek you out and come to crush you. Your goal in this world should be to find and stop the hero before they reach their full potential. To stand a chance of succeeding, you will need a wide information network and the ability to quickly travel between continents. If you do manage to stop the hero, a new baby with the potential to become a hero will be born one year later to continue the cycle. A deer is rich in divine energy, which will accelerate the growth of your demon core. You will acquire planeswalking powers and be able to escape the world in just 100 years, if you manage to survive. Adia, Gods. Diella, Goddess of Comfort. Diella rules over the continent of Aganda. Aganda is far enough from the equator and polar regions to avoid extremes in temperature and tends to have a nice climate all year round. Her people value relaxation and comfort. Her blessing grants the hero a small pocket plane with unlimited food and water, the ability to regenerate twice as fast as a troll, and the ability to respawn once in the temple of their home continent should they die. If the hero has all four blessings, they can respawn without limit. Lidar, God of Magic Lidar rules over Ifera. Ifera spans the tropics and equator and is known for its mages. Its southern and northern regions are where most humans live. The equatorial region is largely a harsh desert. His blessing allows the hero to instantly learn and master any kind of magic that he sees. With his blessing, the hero can also reflect or dispel any hostile magic that they can see with a simple hand gesture. Finally, the hero gains the ability to summon angelic wings which allow them to effortlessly fly around or hover in place. Embium, God of Protection Embium rules over Agith, the largest and northernmost continent. The polar regions of the continent are almost uninhabitable, but the arctic regions can support large-scale farming. His blessing grants the hero immunity to all negative status effects, the ability to breathe underwater, and a kind of sentient barrier magic that will automatically activate to protect the hero without the hero having to think about it. The barrier can withstand a great deal of damage, and should it shatter, it will reform within 30 seconds. Acelia, Goddess of War Acelia rules over Etrus, a continent that is known for its elite soldiers and military games. Atreus is located near the southern tropics. Her blessing grants the hero unlimited stamina and allows the hero to surpass the normal stat cap of 12. With her favour, every blessing that the hero receives from a god will permanently increase the stats of the hero by 1, to a maximum of plus 4 to all stats. The hero gains a supernatural sense of danger that will help him avoid traps and ruin ambushes. Polaris, Warring Sisters Polaris does not have a normal day-night cycle. On one side it is always daytime, and on the other side it is always nighttime. Under normal circumstances this would leave most of the planet in an uninhabitable state, but through divine power the goddesses have rectified the most serious problems of their planet's stalled cycle, such as growing crops in the presence of too much or too little sunlight. Polaris has one large supercontinent that spans most of the globe. There are several disconnected large seas. The temperature range and climate of Polaris is similar to Earth. The technology level of humanity is comparable to ancient Greece. Polaris Challenge Details Twin goddesses watch over Polaris, one the embodiment of the sun, the other of the moon. These twins are currently having a feud that has spanned centuries. Solar the goddess of the sun stopped the normal planetary spin on Polaris to make her obstinate sister acknowledge the necessity of the sun, but her sister Luna just used her powers to compensate for the lack of sunlight on her side of the planet. Ordinarily the goddesses would detect you the moment you entered their world, however the clashing divine energies of the goddesses will mask your arrival. This means that if the goddesses make peace with each other, they will both notice you in short order. The Moon Temple and Sun Temple have been at war with each other for many generations, but neither can make significant progress. In their hearts, both goddesses want an end to hostilities, but neither have been willing to take the first step and apologise. 
if you keep the cycle of hate flowing and ensure that the war continues, the goddesses will continue to overlook your presence as, as long as an inquisitor or hero does not notice your existence. Polaris is rich in talented individuals. Every generation dozens are born with the potential to be a hero, but each goddess can only have a single active hero. If a hero dies or gives up, the goddess can choose a new human to empower from her temple elites. She can only do this once every 10 years, so she cannot continuously throw replacement heroes at her foes. There are two human heroes that are active on Polaris, one hero of the sun and one hero of the moon. Both are beautiful priestesses who serve as the figurehead of their temples. Polaris has a decent amount of divine energy from the warring goddesses, which will slightly accelerate the growth of your demon core. You will acquire planeswalking powers and be able to escape the world in just 250 years, if you manage to survive. Polaris, Gods Sola, Goddess of the Sun Sola watches over the daylight half of the planet. She is stubborn, controlling, and quick to anger. Her blessing allows her hero to store solar energy inside their body. Her hero can release this energy in the form of a solar beam, but they will need to recharge under the sun if they use too much. In the presence of sunlight, her hero can regenerate from any wound within a few seconds. Her hero has an aura of light that dispels all illusions and instantly destroys any undead creature that is weaker than a zombie dragon. Luna, Goddess of the Moon Luna watches over the dark side of the planet. Always lagging behind her sister, she has developed an inferiority complex. Her blessing grants her hero an aura that blinds any enemy within 5 meters of them. A creature that has been blinded in this way will have their sight restored if they leave the area of the aura. In the darkness, her hero can regenerate from any wound within a few seconds. Her hero can reach through any shadow that they can see and grab people from a distance. Harmonia, Revenge Harmonia was intended to be a paradise world. Half of the surface of the planet is land, and the other half is water. The temperature and climate of every part of the planet is kept in a comfortable range by Tyrus, the god of the world. Even during winter and summer, no part of the planet gets too hot or too cold. Tyrus filled the planet with peaceful creatures and abundant plant life to feed his people. The technology level of human civilization in Harmonia is comparable to the early Middle Ages of Earth. Harmonia has recently come under heavy demonic invasion, which has transformed large portions of it from a paradise to a living hell. Harmonia Challenge Details Thousands of years ago, Harmonia was an active world used by demon lords and gods. Due to neglect, it eventually fell into disuse. Tyrus, god of judgement, took notice of the world. Through great effort, he converted the world from a barren wasteland to a paradise world. He intended it to be a place to reincarnate people who he judged to be worthy of paradise. Unfortunately, the actions of Tyrus were eventually found out. When the demon lord Vuna learned of his work, she entered it and began to wreak havoc. Vuna has reached a point where she is able to merge with her demon core, but has chosen to delay her ascension so that she can continue to wage war on Harmonia without consequence. By the truce, Tyrus cannot wield his true power against Vuna, because Vuna has not yet ascended. So Tyrus is restricted to using human heroes, human kingdoms, and blessed humans. The active hero of Tyrus is exceptional and has obtained immortality, but Vuna is as strong as a demon lord can possibly be before ascending, and his hero has thus far been unable to stop her. Vuna is an old friend of Anastasia. She has agreed to provide military assistance if Tyrus turns on you, but only if you agree to assist her in her war effort for as long as you remain on the planet. The much greater power of Vuna will eclipse your own and make Tyrus slow to notice your presence, but you can still be detected early on by an Inquisitor or hero. Should Tyrus be made aware of your presence, he will surely try to destroy you. There are numerous talented people on Harmonia, if the hero dies, Tyrus will be able to empower one of his many elite soldiers to take their place in just five years. Harmonia has abundant energy from his past and current conflicts. You will acquire planeswalking powers and be able to escape the world in just 150 years if you manage to survive. Harmonia Gods Tyrus, 
God of Judgment. Tyrus preaches duty and fair judgment above all else. His blessing allows his hero to summon and shoot numerous swords of light at their foes. Once per month, his hero has the ability to turn a normal human into a superhuman, buffing their stats to near hero levels. Using this ability, Tyrus has been attacking Vuna with parties of blessed superhumans, while his hero remains on the fence in the capital city. Harmonia Demon Lords, Vuna, Demon Lord of Chaos. The old hero of Tyrus humiliated Vuna and nearly destroyed her when she was young. Vuna has returned to pay Tyrus back 100 fold. She has 14 core guardians, three of which are waiting to respawn. Her armies are almost exclusively composed of higher ranking minions. She uses a wide variety of creatures in her armies, but is most known for her usage of behemoths, Cerberus, Abominations, and Werewolves. Scar, Eternal Battleground. Slightly over half of the surface of Scar is land. The rest is covered by ocean. Great frozen seas exist in the far north. Large continents and countries are divided between gods, demon lords, and human rulers with radically different viewpoints. The technology level ranges from the early to late Middle Ages. The five most powerful countries include a mage-hating theocracy, a caste system ruled by nobility, a bastion of pirate lords, a diverse country of human mages and elves, and a large human kingdom. The average temperature of Scar is a bit lower than Earth. The polar regions of the planet are nearly uninhabited by humans. Scar Challenge Details Scar is one of the first sites of the war between humans and demon lords. Some of the divine energies of dead gods and demon lords still permeate the world and serve to lure demon lords in. Those lingering energies combined with the energies of his current conflict would allow you to develop a planeswalker powers in just 80 years. If you remained on the planet, you could ascend in 1,250 years. This rapid path to ascension has made Scar an attractive pick for demon lords who seek to quickly become major players. However, the percentage of demon lords who actually survive that long is very low. The more intelligent demon lords tend to jump away from the world as soon as they are able. The five gods on Scar are at odds with each other. Their people and heroes clash with each other more often than the demon lords, a fact that has emboldened some of the more foolish demon lords on the world. Only one human per generation is born with the potential to become a hero. As there are five gods on the planet, this is not nearly enough for all of them, so the gods have been allowed to abduct talented people from other worlds. The gods are allowed to smite their own heroes if necessary. Should one of their heroes die, the gods are allowed to summon a new hero from another world ten years later. If you choose to start out in this world, the clashing of divine energy will completely mask your presence. However, the rules of this particular world state that all demon lords and gods must be informed of your existence by Anastasia after your first year. Your enemies will not immediately know where you are, but they will know you exist, and they may seek you out. As there are five gods, you can expect numerous inquisitors and other blessed humans. Scar Gods Imera, Goddess of Magic Imera is a goddess of knowledge and magic. She teaches her followers that magic is the true path to power, but it must be tempered with wisdom. She forbids necromancy. She is extremely popular in the magic country of Edomia. Her blessing allows her chosen hero to empower their party, boosting their magical abilities and turning up to five people into lesser heroes. While the hero lives, all party members within 100 meters of his position will be invulnerable to all harm. Lorkmar, God of War Lorkmar does not concern himself with morality or justice. Lorkmar only values strength. Many great and honorable warriors worship Lorkmar, but many despicable conquerors and warlords do as well. His blessing boosts all of the stats of his chosen hero by two, and allows his hero to break through their limits, surpassing the normal stat cap of 12. Once per day, his hero can enter a berserk state that cleanses all negative status effects and makes him immune to all harm for 5 seconds. Nekdos, God of Death Nekdos is the god of death and disease. He teaches his followers that all the other gods are lying about the afterlife and that nothing exists beyond death. The only true path to immortality is to embrace undeath. 
his hero was made into an undead and gifted with a phylactery. When killed, his hero will respawn near the phylactery within a year. His hero emits a deathly aura that causes living enemies within 10 meters of them to quickly wither and die. Enemies that are killed in this way will rise as minions of the hero. Cyros, God of Purity The teachings of Cyros state that only those who are granted power by the gods are worthy of wielding magic. The ones who are born with magical talent of their own are dangerous existence, whose powers can be traced back to demonic or draconic ancestry. His hero is immune to magic and negative status effects. His hero can fire magical projectiles that cause all of the magic in the body of their target to combust all at once. Those with a magical talent can survive, but powerful mages typically explode. Aurora, Goddess of Thievery Aurora teaches that the quick of wit should take advantage of the dull. Her followers are allowed to commit any offences against those who do not worship her. Worshippers of Aurora are not truly welcome anywhere, but they can be found everywhere. Her blessing grants her hero the ability to turn invisible, move silently, and open any lock. All traps within 100 meters of her hero will automatically be disarmed. Her hero will also be blessed with luck and the ability to move through walls like a ghost. Scar, Demon Lords. Mogthar, Lord of Strength. This Demon Lord is a new arrival that comes from your world. His real name used to be Daishi, but he started calling himself Mogthar after his transformation. He is a fledgling like you. This meathead is currently releasing hordes of goblins and orcs into the wilderness near a human kingdom. So far, he has spent over half of his DPU on succubi. The rest has been spent on goblins, orcs, and ogres. He has six arms and high physical stats. His core guardian is a succubus queen, who has started looking upon him coldly. Adriana, Lord of Darkness. Adriana is currently the strongest demon lord in Scar, and the only demon lord on the planet to be truly tested. She survived her first encounter with a human hero. She has made her home in the southern Arctic region. She is known for her black dragons and her shameful love of cosplay. She has two core guardians. The first is an ancient entropic dragon. The second is a shadowy tentacle monster with a hundred mouths and eyes. Ariel, Lord of the Sea. In her original world, Ariel worked as a marine biologist. Her love of the ocean drove her to establish her home in the sea. After her first year, she moved her demon core a full kilometre underwater in the middle of a complex series of underwater caves. She almost exclusively uses aquatic monsters, mostly merfolk, poisonous jellyfish and giant crabs. She has a few megalodon sharks. Her core guardian is the Leviathan. Maya, Trickster. Maya is a harsh world that is dominated by treacherous seas, hostile jungles, great barren wastelands, and vast deserts. The average temperature on the planet is quite a bit higher than Earth. There is no human life in the equatorial regions of the planet. The nicest and most habitable land masses can be found in the northern and southern reaches of the planet. One single god watches over the world. The technology level has reached the point of flintlock pistols. This was not an achievement of the resident population, but rather a result of outside influences. Maya challenge details. The gods use Maya as a place of reincarnation for the worst, thieves, murderers, rapists and other offenders. Criminal acts are commonplace on Maya, a problem that is only exasperated by the harsh living conditions. Ekagi, the god who watches over the planet, has adopted a strategy of letting boredom and infighting take care of the demon laws for him. The rules of his world outright forbid his hero from destroying a demon core. This has caused many demon lords to flock to Maya with the intent of lazily sitting about and growing in what they view to be a safe environment until they are able to jump between worlds. There is next to no energy that your demon core can use to accelerate its growth on Maya, so it will take a demon lord like yourself about a thousand years to reach the point where you are able to jump between worlds. Ikagi provides a large bonus to demon lords who turn on their own kind. When a demon lord destroys the demon core of another demon lord, Ikagi rewards them with a tremendous amount of usable energy, equal to about 500 years of sitting around. 
If you were to destroy just two fledgling demon lords, you could become a planeswalker in record time. Ikagi will instantly know the location of any demon lord that enters his world. After one year, he is allowed to pass that information on to every other demon lord on the planet. The hero of Akagi will attempt to use their abilities to stir up trouble between demon lords. Akagi prefers to summon heroes with long criminal histories from other worlds. His heroes have included rapists, serial murderers, and other such people. Should the hero of Akagi die, they will be able to summon and empower a new hero ten years later. Maya Gods Ikagi, God of Deceit Ikagi thinks of the mortal realm as a playground. He can take possession of the body of his hero whenever he wants, and often does so, but he cannot use his true godly power while he is controlling his hero. When Ikagi takes control of his hero, all negative status effects are cleansed, and his hero becomes immune to any further negative status effects until Ikagi gives up control. He grants his hero the ability to shapeshift, teleport, create up to three copies of themselves, and read the minds of anybody they can see. Maya Demon Lords Noxy, Lord of Serpents and Venom Noxy has made a home outside of the capital city of the largest country. She has set up a dungeon for adventurers, baiting the men with loot. She kills a few of them for pleasure, but lets most leave with some kind of reward so that they will continue to return. Most of her forces consist of large vipers, giant centipedes and armoured beetles that shoot acid. She can summon Lamina and Marilith. She has three core guardians. The first is a Medusa. The second is a Great Worm. The third is a man-eating plant that releases poisonous gas. William, Lord of the Lost William had a rather unfortunate mutation, but he retained his charming personality in class. He made his home in the jungles of Maya, where few dwell, in the hopes of not clashing with humanity. He has access to numerous kinds of extinct creatures, but he tends to favour dinosaurs. His forces consist of Coleophilus, Velociraptors, Ankylosaurus, and Pterodactyl. His tier 4 minion is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. His core guardian is an Argentinosaurus, whose health has exceeded the normal stat cap of 12. Torporia, Lord of Slumber. Torporia is one of many demon lords who are lured to Maya by the prospect of safe and lazy growth. She has made her home beneath a cosy human village where demi-humans are accepted. Her forces consist mostly of bestial humanoid types like cat girls and were bunnies. Her were sheep have the ability to control the dreams of nearby people, and Torporia uses them to have good dreams while she sleeps the day away. Her core guardian is a lion type beastman with exceptional strength and speed. Zargod, Lord of the Microphallus? Zargod is gathering his forces and will no doubt be a troublemaker. He believes himself to be smarter and more deserving of power than the other demon lords around him. He has made his home in the uninhabited wastelands of the equatorial region of Maya and uses portals to move his forces around the world. He has access to various demons that embody the seven deadly sins. He has three core guardians. The first is an archdemon of pride. The second is an archdemon of greed. The third is an archdemon of wrath. Lily, Lord of Lust. Lily has made her home near the edge of a forest that borders several major and frequently used roads. Both she and her minions will occasionally snatch up travelling men and keep them for themselves. Few ever try to escape. Lily used most of her starting power to unlock a wide variety of monster girls. Her core guardian is a powerful monster lord with a high grade elemental magic and the ability to charm people who look into her eyes for more than two seconds. Harmonia. Lord of Solitude. Harmonia was deeply religious and still is. She has not accepted her new position and has decided to isolate herself from the world. She has made her home on a large deserted island in the Northern Sea and has filled that island with Cyclops. She has two core guardians. The first one has the appearance of a young girl and the ability to cast terrible curses on those who look upon her. The second one is a mighty colossus. Before you go, your last and final task is to choose a name and title for yourself. That name and title will be submitted to the Demon Lord Council. The title of a god is strictly determined by their domains, but we Demon Lords are much more lax. 
You are free to submit anything you want. Your submission is what other demon lords will come to know you as. Just don't submit anything too ridiculous, or the council will reject your submission and give you a title of their own. Trust me, you don't want that to happen. Zargon originally wanted to be known as the Lord of All Things. Baal took one look at that suggestion and gave him his new title. Zargon will never be able to change his title. It will be with him for all time. It looks like you're finished. I hope you're satisfied with your choices. What you do now is up to you. Raise an empire, build a dungeon, or lay low. Whatever you do, I would appreciate if you didn't die in the next 20 years. I made a bet with a friend that you'll survive at least that long. Anyway, since you are technically my pupil, I'll give you with the ability to open a portal to my realm, but you're absolutely not allowed to summon your demon core there. If you try, I'll have to expel you. You can come over any time to ask her advice or barter for information. But in exchange, I'll bully you to my heart's content. You don't get to say no. Good luck, and farewell. Leave your choices and your game plans in the comment section below. For the many HFY writers that I'm aware watch my videos, perhaps this will serve as some kind of inspiration or prompt for stories of your own. But be warned. I am also a demon lord, and if you don't like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will destroy you! Also, I have a Patreon linked in the description. Peace out, guys.